How's it going guys? Lynx Forte here back with another battle. Uh, this is the Season 7 Championship of the Pixel Dream League, which is hosted on Cerebi. Um I made it into the championship and I just wanted to show you guys the battle. We are getting ready to start Season 8 in just a few days. So I just wanted to show you how the championship of Season 7 ended. And uh, also why you should pay attention to what is going on at all times. So as you can see, I'm going to lead here with my Sylveon and he actually leads off with his Heatran. I was not expecting him to lead with Heatran. I was expecting him to either lead with Conk or Porygon Z. So I'm just going to switch out of here and I'm going to switch into my Needle King. I don't know what this, I don't know if this Heatran is offensive. Or I don't know if it's defensive. But as you can see, he goes for the Magma Storm and I'm just thinking here, I'm screwed. I just took a lot of damage on my Needle King and Needle King does hurt, you know, uh, can do some damage to a good chunk of his team. So I'm just thinking, okay, well, let's take this thing out. Doesn't affect Heatran. What I didn't notice when the battle started, because I wasn't paying attention, was that this Heatran is sitting on an air balloon. So I just lost a wall breaker in Needle King because I wasn't paying attention. Two turns in and a good, you know, a good powerhouse is gone. So I bring in my Regirock because this Regirock has Drain Punch. What I want to do is I want to break that or I want to get rid of that air balloon because this Regirock also has Earthquake. So I need to get rid of Heatran as soon as possible. So I'm going to go for that Drain Punch, break the air balloon, recover some health. And now I'm going to put him in a situation. He doesn't know I'm carrying Earthquake because normally Regirock doesn't carry Earthquake. Uh, it carries different things. It, Regirock is not played in OU. That's why it doesn't carry Earthquake. So I get my health back. I take the Magma Storm damage. And uh, Heat Ran is going to go for Toxic because he wants to wooden me down throughout the battle. He doesn't want me to be able to just do what I want with this Regirock. So I go for this Earthquake. And down goes Heatran. Heatran is no longer a threat. I don't know if it has stealth rocks, but either way, the rocks are not up on my side of the field, which is very good for me because I don't want to continuously take damage, you know, if if I have to do a lot of switching. So he brings in his conquer door, and I don't want to take a drain punch. To... Wait, did I? St I can't believe I stayed in. What did I? Oh, okay. So I was predicting the knockoff because uh, I didn't want to just switch into something. He he knew I didn't want to take the drain punch. We all know I don't want to take a drain punch. I stayed in predicting the knockoff, and then you know him thinking I'm just gonna stay in and do what I want. So I actually switch in to my duble here, not really worrying about it. So without having to take two knockoffs, what it does is it allows me to uh, go for a sword stance here, and be able to you know get a little boost. And it allows me to do some serious damage to this conk. So, conk goes for fire punch. I was not expecting fire punch. I'm just thinking he's going to keep going for knockoff. Luckily, he does not burn me. I get off an iron head, do a good amount of damage for him. Now, I decided to play it safe here. I knew there was a chance for him going into a Porygon, but I did not want to, you know, take any extra damage. So, I just go for the shadow sneak and play it safe. Obviously, I'm going to lose uh, my Dew Blade here. It's unfortunate because Dublade can do a good chunk to his team as well. So I just lose two Pokemon that can do some serious damage to his team. I didn't see any Life Orb damage, so I'm thinking this thing is either cho it's choice locked in some fashion. And then he goes for Tri-Attack, so I now I know he's no longer choice. Well, I'm choice specs, so I go for the Hyper Voice, and I just take out this Porygon Z with a crit. As you can see, there's a lot of crits in this battle so far. <laughs> and now he brings in his Haxorus. I know there's a chance he's either going to he's going to go for poison jab because that's why he brought in the hacksers. I know there's a chance that he goes for a dragon dance expecting me to switch out, but that's not a chance he can really take knowing I'm locked in to hyper voice. So he go he goes for the poison jab and I bring in Reggie Rock. Knowing I could take, you know, the hit, I can probably get off uh, a good chunk of damage on it even taking an earthquake with the next turn. He, know, he probably knows an Ice Punch is coming because he's seen me run it before. So he switches out in the Conk just to sack it off, and I, I get the Ice Punch off. So Conkador is no longer an issue. There's going to be no Mach Punches, no Drain Punches. Conk is gone, which is a huge relief for me because I wanted this thing gone as soon as possible. So he brings in Gallade, and I'm just thinking here, okay, Gallade's going to kill something. I can't let this thing set up a Swords Dance. So at this time, you know, I'm just thinking, 
I'm gonna use T Wave just in case he wants to set up a Swords Dance, but it's probably gonna have to let Reggie Rock go down. So he goes for Drain Punch, which is huge because I know he doesn't have close combat. I know that you know some of my Pokemon can't take that hit now. So he's right here. I'm thinking, okay, Sylveon Choice Specs can take out this guy late, no problem. He goes to knock off to get rid of my Choice Specs. This is actually helpful for me, and you'll see why in a minute. But I go for this Choice Specs, take out Galade, no problem. Another huge threat on his team, gone. So he's going to bring his Haxorus. I, I can't switch out. At this point, I know I just have to get the damage off. I have to do what I can to get rid of this Haxorus. Or I have to take it from the Haxorus. I put Quick Attack on a Choice Specs Sylveon, hoping to get it knocked off. That's why getting it knocked off was so important. So I got like, some damage off on that Haxorus. And getting that damage off was important because right here, I'm going to bring in my Entei. Uh, this Entei here is Choice Bandit. I did some calcs before I chose my attack. And because I still know he has Clefable in the back, I decided to just go for Extreme Speed, knowing it would be close to an Oko from that range and knowing I, I can take an Earthquake. Fortunately for me, I was able to get a crit on that E-Speed, meaning Entei did not take any damage. So this is where the battle ends. It's just going to be three extreme speeds um, to finish off off the battle. The reason why getting that crit on Haxorus was so important for me is because I still had Mega Sceptile, but my Mega Sceptile was not a special attacker. It was actually a physical attacker, meaning I'm pretty sure this is an unaware Clefable, and if it was an unaware Clefable, I couldn't touch it. I mean, my physical Sceptile had Sword Dance, but it doesn't help. Um, I'm pretty sure my attack set was something like Swords Dance, Dragon Dance, or Dragon Claw, Leaf Blade, and uh, a filler move, maybe Earthquake. But I was just fortunate for that E speed because I couldn't touch it. Anyway, I, I was a Season 7 champion. Season 8 coming soon. I'll be posting those battle videos. Like, comment, subscribe. Got some battles coming for you along the way. Later.